we had a hell of a team though. Mm -hmm. You ask you ask anybody else at that time across the league. Oh yeah, they'll they'll let you know like all right. Even though we didn't win like a championship or you know that that division title or all of that. Motherfuckers knew they was, hey, you better get your rest tonight before. <laughs> yeah, you guys were 12 minutes away from potentially thwarting the entire Lakers dynasty. I mean, from what I've heard, of, if you guys win that game, if Game 7 in the yeah. 2000 Western Conference Finals goes the other way, then Kobe or Shaq, from what I've heard and understand, uh, one of those guys is leaving. Yeah. It, so it that's the, the entire history of the NBA changed in that, in that quarter. Um, I mean, let's talk about that game because it, it is a fascinating game. I'm sorry, guys. Bonzi so called the timeout. He's gonna rip the bandaid off. Huh? <laughs> God, let's, we're we're early. I was I was hoping to finesse a little bit more, but let's talk about that game. Bonzi oh, called the timeout. Is it whose no. fault? Yeah, is it Bonzi? She, she missed thirteen straight shots. Now, <laughs> you know, you gotta think. I was I was young. You know, I was young. I was like in my second year, and I remember that game. So you know, we, we talk about it all the time, and I remember. You know, we was, we was up 17 or something like that. And I just remember 16. my mind, the, cro the thing coming across my head was like, wow, we're going to the NBA Finals and we're going to be playing Indiana and I'm going to be going home to play Indiana and we're going to beat the hell out of them. And that was just my mindset when we was up 17. I'm like, oh, shoot, we got this. Because we were playing so well, you know, everybody was playing well. We was all like, you know, we, you know, we had them. And I just remember, you know, C Coach Dunleavy started making some different adjustments and stuff that, you know, that he wasn't making that got us to where we was at. And I remember sitting on the bench and, you know, usually the games go by fast. That game was going by slow as hell and that lead was going down. It was diminishing fast as hell. I would look up there from 17 and a bank shot 3, 14, 12, you know. The next thing you know, you get to that lob and all that good stuff when she dunked, mm -hmm. I mean, Shaq dunked on she. Mm -hmm. And it was, it, was, it, it was a lot. And I remember sitting on the bench and I was just sitting there just so distraught. And I just remember I was being so foolish to myself. And I said to myself, shoot, we'll be back next year because that was our second year in a row going to the NBA final. I mean, sorry, the conference finals. So I was just so naive thinking that we had such a whip that we was going to be back next year because they really can't fuck with us in real mm -hmm. life. We knew it. We, know we, were, we was more talented. Don't get me wrong, Kobe and Shaq are the next level, but as a team and as a whole collectively, we felt like we had better talent. And, you know, and if we just kind of neutralize those two or just keep them kind of at bay, we can stop the rest of the guys, you know, anybody. And like he said earlier about the league, the league was scared of us back then, too. So we knew we had, you know, we had a mindset going into games that we was up 10 or 15 just going into the game because they were scared of us. So I was naive at that fact that we thought we can get back. But it was a it was it was definitely, um, man, something to really think on your life, how we would have could have been, you know, if we would have won that game. Mm hmm. Yeah, I'm over it now. You know, because <laughs> you got a chip. Years later, no, I mean, even if I didn't, you know, it's, it's years later. It was, it was a good game. We've always had good games and good series against the Lakers. Um, yeah. um, while I was there and before Bonzi got there, and even when he was there, we've always had good games against the Lakers. Yeah. But yeah, that one man, we were we were up 16. We was like Dougie Fresh, six minutes, <laughs> and like you said, B. Shaw hit a bank three. First, we were already up, and we were in control. And then um, Bonzi's guy called a timeout. His homie, he calls a timeout. You can't say his name? Your homie? D say his name, Mr. Dunleavy. Oh, Dunleavy. <laughs> and <laughs> Mr. Dunleavy, Coach Dunleavy. And yeah, your guy. And he called a timeout. So the way I looked at it was, you know, he's over coaching. You know, he wanted to try to get, like, the coach of the year or – to show that, oh, you know, I can coach this and this, you know, this is my team. Like, all right, you, first of all, you are already going to get the accolades because when you win, who gets the accolades? The head coach. You know, when you lose, who gets, who gets it uh, blamed on? The players. So it's like it was a win-win for you. All you had to do was sit back. You know, we had the experience with Pip um, coming off of the six that he got in Chicago. So it was like, okay, he was – he was pretty much helping guide us and develop us because we all haven't been to that, to that that deep in the playoffs before. Um, you know, we, Lakers will always put us out first round, second round. But once we got more veteran players, we started to go deeper and deeper. And playing against them in that game, we had it. Yeah. Um, as Bonzi said, we had it. And I can remember looking on a bench, and you got guys like yeah, you got other cats just looking in the stands. Called, Talking to chicks, they even even uh, Phil Jackson, he was out of it. But then that timeout, 
I guess, you know, they they mustered, they, they rallied the troops. And when, like he said, when B. Shaw came out and, and hit that, like, 50-foot bank three, it's like, damn. And then from there, it was all bad luck for us. We missed 13 straight shots. Out of that 13, I think I missed seven myself. At least. At least. For real. And I'm, I'm talking about bunnies, <laughs> little jump hooks that I knew was good, little jump shots I knew was good that I was hitting all fucking series. But, like, damn, I looked at it. I was like, wait, that's a... Uh, as, as the time went on, I was like, that was an unlucky number right there, that 13. Yeah. I was like, all right, I missed seven of them joints. Smitty missed a couple. Pitt missed a couple. I was like, all right, damn. At that time, it hurt. But as I said, you know, with me being older now and then, you know, just removed from the game, want to help other kids and stuff play the game, you know, it's, it's just great stories to tell, great locker room stories or great AAU stories with the kids on the bus and all of that dealing with those games but man like bonzi said i was i was i was the same way i'm like man we about to beat the shit out of indiana i'm like <laughs> i'm like i think we might didn't we split with them that yeah, year we split with them but we we it's like man we like, like all right team. all we got to do is slow down j rose and reggie i was like we know we're not gonna stop them but just slow them down as he said keep them at bay yo we wasn't gonna let dale get off the davis boys we wasn't letting them get off uh, just nobody. I don't care who they had. We, then they Rick had... Smiths. That uh, would that would have been a hell of a matchup though with Rick Smith and Sabonis. That would have been a good matchup. Take, that that would have been a grand finale to that career between them because I know they played against each other. You know, overseas in the Euro leagues. Yeah. That would have been a. Ooh. You, know, you know, I don't know about you, but I, I couldn't watch that game until I didn't watch that game two thousand game seven until rest in peace Kobe passed. Oh, I watched it that night. I didn't watch it. I couldn't watch it. I was so sick about it. I never could watch it. And then when Kobe passed, I kind of let it go. And I told myself I can watch it. So now I watch it. I've probably watched it 10 times through its entirety since. Mm -mm. And I kind of just, you know, as a coach now, you know, you kind of, you know, you find yourself scouting and looking and seeing why we lost. And I was like, I, you know, I looked at it and I was like, you know, we, it was just fate. Like you said, we shot the same shots we were hitting. It was just mm -hmm. fate for them. And. It was bad timing for us, I guess, and but yeah, we didn't so, do nothing different. So you didn't want it took you twenty years to watch it. I couldn't watch it. And she, you watched it that night. Mm -hmm. That's sadistic. Yeah, we went, we went home a lot. No, I had to get back at it because it was that feeling. Mm. They, they, I felt like I got robbed at that time. I felt like I got robbed. They took something from me. So I'm like, all right, now I got to go back and see where it was. Outside of me knowing that I was about 85% of those 13 missed shots. Outside of that, I'm like, all right, where did, where did we fuck up at? Like Bonzi said, where did we fuck up at? I gotta go back and look, where did I fuck up at? Mm -hmm. And you don't say, oh man, I wish I would've stepped up sooner. You can't say that. Mm -hmm. You know, you just gotta look at it and see, all right, and just put it in that memory bank for next time. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it, the, the tension in that building, man, Look, that was that was one of the best games I ever played in. Even though I came out on a losing end, um, that was one of the best games I ever played in, and one of the best game sevens. I, I do have to admit, 